Hi you guys, welcome to the kitchen. Jack Frost and I welcome you. Today we're gonna make some panettone. This is a holiday bread that um, originated in Italy and it starts with a biga, which is a starter that you make the night before and it's got just some flour and water and yeast and you let it rise for about 12 hours. So I did this last night around eight o'clock and now I'm going to mix in the rest of the ingredients uh, to form the dough. So we've just added some eggs and some butter and flour is coming up. Now I did pre-measure everything. You can find the link to the recipe on King Arthur Flowers website below. Um, but they're all pretty basic ingredients. This is just sugar and salt and then um, a good amount of yeast, about six and three quarters tablespoons is what I'm using in my recipe. I did modify it just a little bit because I'm going to be making these as gifts for my friends and I have these paper forms that I wanted to fill up nicely. So this batch will make two loaves that will fill my paper forms. Um, nice and full But if you're just going to be making one Loaf you can find that recipe on King Arthur flour or if you don't have a paper form You can just use a tube pan or bunt pan and bake it in there So this couldn't be easier. I didn't even mix anything up. I've just put all my ingredients into the bowl set it on my mixer put the dough hook on and Get it started. I have it kneading on on the setting number two and then I walk away from it for about 10 minutes while it kneads and mixes together. Okay now that we've let our dough knead for about 10 minutes we need to incorporate the dried fruit. I'm going to do this by hand so it doesn't get overworked. Also I just like playing in the dough a little bit. So panettone is a sweet bread that comes from Italy and it traditionally has citrus peel and citron in it. However, I'm going to use other dried fruits including raisins, cranberries, dates, pineapple, and currants. Um, I got this mix at King Arthur Flower, which I'm lucky enough to have right down the road from me. But if you get dried fruit from the grocery store and just make your own mix, it'll work out great. So just take your dough out and put it on the counter. You'll notice I did not add any extra flour. The dough is a little bit sticky, not too bad. I can manipulate it without too much of a mess, but it definitely doesn't need any extra flour. That's just gonna dry it out. So get over it being sticky <laughs> and just push it around and um, make sure that it's got a nice smooth texture and that it's shiny and um, then we'll put some fruit in it. So I've kind of spread my dough out a little bit and I'm going to um, scoop out about half of what I intend on adding to the dough and just sprinkle it on the dough. And uh, sometimes I'm a little precious about it, but it's okay. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna fold it into thirds. Um, we're going to incorporate a lot of dried fruit. We want to try to mix it in as evenly as possible. Um, the fruit, the weight of the fruit and the sugar in the fruit can retard the rising a little bit, um, which just means that it, it's slow to rise. And um, if you unevenly distribute the fruit in the dough, you could get a lopsided rise or you know if you try to split this in two and one has more fruit than the other then one's going to be a little sad and short and the other one's going to be super tall because it didn't have enough fruit to balance it out so we're going to just try to mix that in as evenly as possible um, and you just really want to mix it until the fruit is accepted into the dough and it's not falling out um, over mixing can release more sugar into the dough which isn't what we want to do. We want to have it nice and dry um, and mixed just enough so that the fruit isn't falling out of it.
And that looks great. I'm just going to cover it with plastic wrap now and let it sit for 10 minutes to get a chance to rest and relax. And then we'll separate and shape the lobes and put them in the, the forms. Yeah, the forms. Okay, so the dough's had a chance to rest, and I'm gonna divide it into two. You can see my paper forms there. I got those years ago at King Arthur Flower, but you can usually find them at like Home Goods or online, and they're just Panettone forms. Um, but I got them years ago intending to do this, make gifts for my friends at Christmas time, and I didn't, and I didn't, and I didn't. <laughs> so now I'm finally using them. Um, you're going to watch me putz around a little bit. I could have eyeballed it and cut the loaf in half, but I wanted them to be even. And the way to make sure that they're completely equal is to put all the dough on the scale and then cut it in half and make sure that they're equal pieces. You're also going to see me flail a little bit in a second here trying to shape these loaves. The recipe does not say that you need to shape them, which would mean in the other doughs you need to give it structure so you'll fold it up on itself several times and and then uh, roll it into a nice tight ball so that it, it has the ability to rise nice and high. Um, but Apparently, <laughs> that's not really necessary with panettone, but I did it anyway because it just didn't feel right not to. But it is a little sticky, so it's a little hard to manipulate. Um, but basically, get your dough into a little bit of a ball and then set it into your pan. While I'm working on this, um, I'd like to go ahead and let you know this will take two to three hours to rise. Um, now my house is pretty cold and if you have a cold house and have a hard time getting your dough to rise because it's not warm enough, um, what you can do is in the unheated oven turn the light on and put the dough back in the oven for its rise. Um, if it's quite cool you could even put in a pot of boiling water at the bottom of the oven and that would create a nice environment for your dough to thrive and get nice and tall. Uh, if you have a warm house you can just leave it on the counter. Just cover it in plastic wrap so that it doesn't dry out on the top. Um, you can spray it a little bit with some non-stick spray to make sure it doesn't stick. But yeah, it'll take a good couple of hours, so you can go take a shower, get out of your jammies. <laughs> um, you have a few hours to run some errands, um, but it's worth the wait. And here we are, all nice and risen, up over the top of the paper form. It looks beautiful. Before I put it in the oven, I'm going to put an egg wash on it so it gets nice and shiny and dark brown as it bakes. Now it does get rather dark on its own, even without an egg wash. Um, Panettone is kind of famous for that. So what you'll want to do is um, the bake time on it runs anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on the size of your loaf. Um, go ahead and set your timer for 20 minutes. And then if it's getting a little brown at that point, um, you can go ahead and cover it in foil so that it doesn't get too, too brown, <laughs> if that makes sense. When I took my loaves out of the oven when they were done rising, I go on ahead and sent it, set it for 350 degrees. And again, that bake time is going to run anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on the size of your loaf. Oh my goodness, the house smells so good. And look at these beauties. So tall and golden and shiny. They're gonna make wonderful gifts for my friends. Now, the way you can tell that it's done, if you have a thermometer, use it. These loaves are really tall and they can have a tendency to not get done in the middle. So you wanna get it up to 170 degrees. If you don't have a thermometer, that's okay. Um, other ways that you can tell it's done is that nice golden color, but you want to lift it up 
and thump the bottom of it, it should sound like a hollow drum. Uh, that'll help you know that it's finished as well. I hope you'll give this a try. And if you have leftovers, you can always make panettone bread pudding. Look below for the recipe. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Happy holidays. I'll see you soon. Bye.